We are Alas, bringing you the Eagle Pad, going green and being clean. I'm Alana Price, the research manager. I'm in charge of doing a majority of the research for the project. I research about the materials we use for the pad and also research about materials that other popular brands use in their pads. My name is Liliana Hernandez. I'm the creative design lead. I was in charge of, of creating and designing the pad using the materials our research manager, Alana, provided to us. I'm Aliana Willingham. I'm the project coordinator in charge of managing our time by scheduling meetings and relaying announcements to the other teammates. I made sure to schedule meetings when all of us had time and kept everyone on task during our meetups. I'm Sophia Pham, the project manager. I'm in charge of managing our finances, purchasing materials, and taking in or asking for donations. I purchased the materials that Alana researched and thought would be best fit for our project. I also did a lot of the organizing and structuring for our portfolio and presentation. We are representing Young Women's Leadership Academy in San Antonio, Texas. We formed a team as we became friends in eighth grade and had many strengths together, although we also have our own individual strengths. Last year was our first time competing in the STEM challenge and we decided to participate once again this year. We really wanted to put our best effort into the project. Together as a team, we're well-rounded and collaborative with each other while also growing together as time goes by. Alana's individual strengths include being Reasonable, committed, and determined. Aliana is very resourceful and attentive, as well as very efficient. Lily is an outgoing, creative, and very social person. And my strengths, as said by my team members, are that I'm organized, proactive, and prepared. Our chosen project for the 2022-2023 STEM Challenge is creating a biodegradable menstrual pad. For the project, we use the engineering design process, and this is an overview of the process. First, we define the problem, and then we do background research on solutions and needs. Then we specify the requirements based off of the needs for the pad. And then we brainstormed and chose a solution after ideating, and then we created the prototype. Once we created the prototype, we tested it, and if the solution met the requirements, then we graphed the data. If it didn't, then we went back to brainstorming, prototyping, or testing. The problem we are solving is the excessive amount of waste from period products. About 12 billion pads from period and 7 million tampons end up in landfills every year in the U.S., which accounts for 0.1% of all waste created in the U.S., which is around 240,000 tons. These period products lead to environmental and chemical waste because they are made of plastics that break down into microplastics and non-biodegradable absorbent polymers that take up to 800 years to break down. A leading period product brand, Always Ultra Thin, uses six main materials to make their pads, and only one of them are biodegradable. Additionally, they have 17 more additives that are used for color, fragrance, and absorption. And of these, almost all of them leave behind chemical waste and cause health concerns for users. After analyzing our problem, we decided that creating a 100% biodegradable menstrual pad would be our solution. We wanted our menstrual pad to be 100% biodegradable to minimize the waste in the environment. Our pad being able to biodegrade in less than 50 years would reduce waste by law, which is why we decided to make this a requirement. Holding 50 milliliters of blood is a big amount, as most pads only hold up to 15 milliliters, so it would be good for people with heavier flows. Comfortability is also an important requirement, as we want people to be satisfied with our menstrual pad. Our purpose for creating a biodegradable menstrual pad is to reduce waste and for it to be inexpensive to make while still being able to function the same as a regular store bought pad. About 12 billion menstrual and 7 billion tampons go into landfills annually, not including shipping and packaging. To combat this, we are attempting to make a 100% biodegradable menstrual pad with the least amount of waste and can function the same as a store bought one. We calculated the average number of pads that someone uses in their life as well in the world. This calculation was made based on if their period lasted five days in which they are awake 16 hours a day and change their pad every four hours. So in one cycle, someone used about 20 pads and in one year, they used about 240. If they menstruate for 40 years, then that person uses 9,600 pads in their life. According to our research, about 1.8 billion people in the world menstruate. So based off this info, 36 billion pads are being used in one cycle in a year. 
and 8.64 E12 pads being used in one year and an astounding 3.456 E14 over the course of their lives, which is about 345.6 trillion pads. The materials we decided to use for the first two prototypes were biodegradable Ziploc bags, which biodegrades to four, in four to nine months, cellulose sponges about five years to biodegrade, cotton squares and circles take about five months to biodegrade, liquid glue and a cotton shirt, which takes five months to biodegrade. For the last two prototypes, we decided to remove liquid glue and use cotton thread instead. We also thought it would be better to completely remove the cotton shirt and use bamboo sheets instead since it biodegrades faster. Now Lily will explain how she used these materials Alana researched about to create a sketch of our first solution. So our main goal was to work with what we had at the time, especially since we were on a tight budget. So we started with our cotton shirt, which was four inches by 10. Then we added our cotton squares, uh, I'm sorry, our cotton circles and our cotton squares. Then a cellulose sponge. Then we added more cotton squares and a cellulose Ziploc bag. So first, we, um, we had the biodegrade of the black bag and we cut the rectangle to measure four by nine inches. Then we laid down our four cotton squares and our circles onto a four by nine plastic and laid the sponge on top of the cotton squares. We added four cotton squares across the surface of the sponge and four cotton circles on top of the squares. Then we folded the plastic over it and we used glue to seal and reduce leakage and then we used our cotton shirt over that and glued it down. And that's how we got our first one. The Here's pad on the left is EcoPad A and the EcoPad B is the pad on the right. The difference between these two prototypes is the sponge they used. Because we had four requirements, we had four things we needed to test. To test that the pad is 100% biodegradable, we researched about the materials we used and made sure they were biodegradable. To test if it would biodegrade, would biodegrade in less than 50 years, we researched about how long the materials would take to biodegrade and also contacted an expert, Dr. Kimberly Meyer, who made an estimate. To test how much blood the pad could hold, we measured how much fake blood that we created could be absorbed. For comfortability, we came up with criteria to test, and the recipe for the fake blood included flour, corn syrup, water, and food color. Now that the menstrual pads met most of the requirements, one expert we met with, Dr. Kimberly Miner, recommended that we used a less tightly woven material for the top layer of the pad instead of the cotton so that it could biodegrade faster. She recommended us a burlap, bamboo, or coffee filter material. We also decided after communication with our leads that we should improve the design to prevent liquids from leaking over from the sides of the pad. Other improvements include attachment of sticky material or a clasp to attach to the underwear and a packaging design. So here is our first sketch for EcoPad C with a moderate flow. And this is the diagram of EcoPad C. So these, this includes the material. So we've, we've got a Ziploc bag and cut to six by 11 inches. Then we laid three slightly stretched out cotton squares onto the six by 11 inch plastic. We added three cotton circles across the surface of the three cotton squares. And then we added our thin sponge. We went in with three, three more cotton circles and above that three slightly stretched out cotton squares. We used the plastic, I used the plastic and put it over the, um, the materials and sealed it with glue. And over that, we used a bamboo cloth that we were able to find and sewed it together, adding our wings and file tape. Here is the process that we took to create the to create the moderate flow pad. Here is the sketch for our EcoPad D for people with heavier floats. This is the diagram of EcoPad D. And this is how we made EcoPad So we took the biodegradable bag and again measured six by 11 inches to lay it out. Then we laid four uh, size stretched out cotton squares onto the six by 11 plastic. Then we added a thin, a thin sponge with a different length and 
we added a second one on top of it. So the reason why we are using the thin sponges rather than our other sponge that was thicker, the cellulose one, was because over time we noticed, I noticed that the cellulose sponge had began to become stale in a way, and I wanted for future reference to prevent that. So we ended up focusing on what was around the sponge rather than just the sponge itself. And this is a, a diagram going over the steps that I took to create the um, to create the pad. The smaller one is the moderate flow pad, while the bigger one is the heavy heavy flow pad. We see that all the eco pads are 100% biodegradable and biodegrade under 50 years, but eco pad A and B weren't able to meet all of our requirements. After getting feedback from experts, we decided to change materials that could hold 50 milliliters of fake blood and is comfortable. After testing EcoPad C and D, we were glad to see that, all, that they have met all the requirements needed. This is a table showing the amount of blood that each period product could hold. And as you can see, EcoPad D held the most. And this is it showing it in a chart. Our next step for EcoPad 2.0 is to reduce thickness, reduce the time it takes to biodegrade, and make a build your own kit available for places of poverty or lower income. This would become a priority as in many places facing poverty, there is no way to dispose of menstrual products, which is why it would be useful to have biodegradable pads in these areas. This is also helpful because in these areas, they use towels and socks as makeshift pads that can't completely be cleaned by water if it is available. So to conclude the presentation, we use the engineering design process to create three different 100% biodegradable menstrual pads. Our data showed that EcoPad D was able to hold the most liquid out of all the period products. This comparison proves that menstrual products can still be usable even without plastic and non-biodegradable absorbent polymers. After consulting with Dr. Kimberly Rain Miner, we were able to conclude that EcoPad A and B would biodegrade in around 15 to 20 years, depending on the conditions. Although EcoPad C and D would biodegradable, biodegrade faster as we use bamboo fibers, and we estimate that we cut down the time to five years. This is our resources and our work cited. Okay. Now I am going to show you the pads. So here is the one for Modern Flow. It has the wings attached to it, the uh, sticky adhesive, the biotape, and this is the one for the heavy flows with the wings as well and the sticky adhesive tape. Thank you for your time.